Hi guys, how are you? This is Lois. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well and safe from wherever you are. Today I want us to talk about a subject that has become very popular in my inbox. And this question is, Lois, how much does it cost to come to Canada as an international student? And uh, for today we shall be looking at post-secondary education, that is a uh, uh, for people who are coming here to colleges or universities. Okay, my friends? So, I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant and I'm based in Calgary, Alberta, guys. I work online, okay? I'm getting a lot of requests from people asking about my physical office location. Uh, I work online and I meet people from all over the world. It doesn't matter your country. If you need my help, I'm here to help you. I meet people virtually on Zoom, on Teams, and all the other video platforms, okay? So if you need to book a consultation, you can always head on to our website, www.mileleimmigrationservices.ca. Now, before we start, guys, I just want to thank you so much uh, for subscribing to my channel. It's a journey that has taken us three years. You've been with me for three years. You've given me a lot of support and we are just getting into a hundred thousand subscribers. That is good and that is big, guys. I really appreciate. I just want to take this moment, one minute, to thank you for that support. You've worked with me on this journey. Uh, you have been extremely helpful. You've given me a lot of business. You have given me contribution uh, to the content that I create here and I appreciate. You have shared my videos. Uh, there's some people I saw, they had shared my videos over 10,000 times. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, I appreciate. So, if this is you and you haven't subscribed and you've been contemplating on whether to subscribe, could you please, please take up this moment and hit that subscribe button so that we hit on that 100,000 subscribers. I will really, really, really appreciate guys, okay? Now, the information on this platform is purely for education purposes. Please guys, this is not legal advice. Don't say, Lois said this and this, and I went and did. Uh, so this is education purposes. If you need personalized legal advice uh, on matters Canadian immigration, if you have an immigration question, if you're feeling at a crossroad, you don't know what to do, you're feeling overwhelmed by the information out there, you need a second opinion about a legal issue, anything, you need to know which is the best immigration program for you. So I do all that. But my friend, you have to book a consultation and uh, the details on how to book a consultation are going to be embedded in the description part of this video. Uh, but you can always head on to our website, www.mileleimmigrationservices.ca. Now, how much does it cost to come to Canada as an international student? You know, international students in Canada pay a prime rate to study here compared to Canadian citizens or permanent residents. Okay, uh, you realize that the two people that I just discussed there, that is our Canadian citizens and permanent residents, those ones pay a fraction of what international students pay here in this country. Believe it. Okay, so on that breath, I want to mention that because of just how big Canada is and the number of schools that we have for post-secondary education, we have a lot of schools. We have over 271 designated learning institutions here. So because of that, you realize that there is no one single fee that fits all schools. So you always have to look at this subject based on, uh, you know, on your budget and the cost that you're taking. And of course, something that I always mention, uh, your future immigration needs. Because, you know, you could take the right course, you could take uh, the right province, uh, the ones that you want rather, but then you may miss out on future immigration. So one of the things I tell people to consider at the beginning of their journey rather than later is their immigration uh, needs. When you meet with me on a consultation, the first thing, especially people who book the study consultations, the first thing that I ask people, what is your future goal? Are you planning to come to Canada as an international student and settle permanently here? 
or are you just coming here study and then go back home and you know invest the skills that you learned here back home so those are two different goals and they should be taken into consideration before you land in Canada yes a lot of you come here and then they realize that, oh my goodness, uh, the course that I selected or rather uh, the school that I selected and the province that I selected, I may not be able to become a permanent resident. And at that point, it could be too late. Okay, some of you come too late to me. Okay, guys. So if you can incorporate uh, getting the right legal advice before you spend money, before you apply for schools, before you consider these things, you could end up saving yourselves a lot of money, a lot of anguish, uh, a lot of time later on, and maybe even having to move a province or changing course. Those are things that you can uh, address uh, at the start of your journey. Okay, guys? Now, I say that there's no one fee that fits it all. So, we have to look at individual situations because, you know, uh, of course, your situation, your profile is different from the other profile. Your needs are different. OK, so let us look at the factors that determine what, you know, how much money you'll pay for tuition here. OK, so tuition here uh, depends on a number of factors. OK. Uh, and for this video, this uh, let me just tell you what we shall be addressing. For this video, I want us to look at the tuition, the factors of the tuition, uh, also something else that we call the living expenses. We also want to look at other fees. We want to look at the visa requirements. And also we look at the proof of the finances. Like how would you show that proof of finances that you are able to fund your studies in Canada? Okay. So let's go back to tuition. So what determines how much tuition you pay? It varies by schools. Okay. What do I mean by school? Because not all schools are equal in Canada. And, you know, when I say schools, we, Canada has private schools, colleges and universities. It also has uh, public universities and colleges. And then you realize that even those colleges are not the same, even whether they are public, whether they fall within one group, they are still not the same. They're not, we're not going to say that, oh, all public schools charge the same amount of money. No. Okay. Again, universities as well. Universities don't all charge the same. Okay. So you find that uh, community colleges are among the cheapest here in Canada. Uh, then followed by private colleges and then when you go to universities the same uh public universities are the cheaper they are the cheaper options and then we have the the private universities but even in those public universities i'm going to address the public universities because they form the majority of the institutions here. And remember of what maybe you've heard me talk about, it's called the DLI, Designated Learning Institution. You want to make sure that you're coming to a designated learning institution here. And majority of those designated learning institutions, they are public. You realize that even those public universities, they are not the same, my friend. Okay? We have regular universities and then we have what could be considered as the Ivy League universities in this country. Uh, I'm going to give you a few examples. This is not an exhaustive list. But when I talk about the Ivy League universities, I'm talking of, you know, U of T, that is University of Toronto. Here in Calgary, we have University of Calgary. Yes, that is home for me. And then we have McGill University in Montreal. We have UBC, that is University of British Columbia in British Columbia. We also have University of Ottawa. And uh, the other one that I'm going to mention is University of Waterloo. Okay. Those are among some of the best universities in this country. So you're going to realize that the fees in these universities is not going to be the same fees in a regular university. Let's say you're talking about University of Mount Royal or University of Lethbridge. Mount Royal University is not going to be costing the same as University of Ottawa. Okay, guys. Yes. Yeah, so everything varies here. So you really need to to know what it is you're really interested in work on uh, a list of your priorities. Okay. Then, <laughs> of course, it's going to depend on the course. Remember, course is really, really, really important. Not all courses are the same and not all courses cost the same. Okay. 
so some courses are expensive other courses are you know they are affordable i'm not gonna say cheap because cheap is relative uh, but i can say they are affordable compared to the other courses so you uh, what i've personally come to find is that um some courses like in IT, these specialized courses in AI, uh, machine learning, uh, security, those ones can be very, very, very expensive, okay? Uh, on the other hand, you also see that courses like ma masters, let's go to the masters programs, uh, MBAs are very expensive, okay? And even when I say masters are very expensive, believe me, you're going to find a master's program that costs 30,000 in a certain university uh, and another master's and uh, that, that costs 39 or 40,000 in a different university. The same course, okay? So MBAs are very expensive here, um, regardless of the school, uh, but you still find that some universities, there could be like a 10,000 difference in price for an MBA, okay? So that's where you, you have to decide, do I, do I wanna go to those Ivy League schools whereby their MBA is 45,000 Canadian dollars, or do I want to go to a regular university where they have the same MBA that is 30,000 Canadian, even 20,000 Canadian dollars a year? Yes, it could be double the price. Okay, same thing with courses like a uh, Masters of Public Health. Oh my goodness, that thing is expensive regardless. <laughs> okay, so I've realized that majority of universities, they really are expensive on, uh, on that kind of a program. Uh, on the other hand, you'll find that there are some other cheap masters. Yes, you know, I've seen uh, uh, some masters that actually, uni um, is, is it University of Saskatchewan? I was going through their website and some of their masters are like 8,000 Canadian dollars a year. You see, so you can't compare, it's still a masters, it's 8,000. And then some other school has a master's that is 45,000 Canadian dollars. You know, that can pay for four of you. Okay. So, and that is per year. When I talk about fees, the figures that I'm mentioning here are per year. It's not the entire course. So actually that leads us to the other factor that I want to talk about is, you know, the length of the course. Okay. Here we have courses that are one year. And when I say one year, it's eight months eight month programs are called one year programs so we're talking of one year programs two year programs three year programs four year programs so if we're talking of a course that costs ten thousand a year of course you have to factor in the fact you know by four so it's forty thousand uh canadian dollars for tuition per year okay and then of course the other factor that you need to consider is the level of course yes so is it a college level entry college program or um, a bachelor's program uh, or a postgraduate diploma, a postgraduate certificate or a master's program or a PhD. So you realize that all those vary, okay? Most of the time I find like um, college diplomas are the cheapest, okay? They are the cheapest um, and master's could be uh, the most expensive. However, do not let that, you know, don't take that to hurt because you realize that there are some postgraduate certificates. Yes, I have seen postgraduate certificates for one year that cost 29,000 Canadian dollars. One year. And it's just a postgraduate certificate. Well, as I said, there are some masters that go for 10,000 Canadian dollars. So it depends really on uh, the issues that I said, your budget, your course, and your immigration needs. Okay. So what is the average tuition then, Royce? I know that's the question you're asking. What's the average tuition? I tell people the average tuition. And when I say average tuition, uh, that is by the majority, you're looking at about 18,000 Canadian dollars a year. That doesn't mean you can't find a school that is costing 10,000 Canadian dollars. Okay. It does not mean you can't find a school that goes for $10,000. Uh, and the same course would still be going for uh, $39,000, okay? It could vary again. Now, <laughs> you really have to watch out on the province, okay? You find that Canada has very competitive provinces and then also has, you know, the smaller provinces. And in the smaller provinces, education is cheaper, 
than in the competitive provinces. Competitive provinces, these are the bigger provinces, Ontario, Alberta, British Columbia, okay? Followed by Saskatchewan and Manitoba in that order. But when you're looking at smaller provinces, that is Nova Scotia, uh, New Brunswick, um, Newfoundland and PEI as well as Quebec so you find that they could be cheaper doesn't mean that you can you you won't find an expensive course in those provinces because it depends also on the course and the level and blah 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 like we discussed already okay uh, but in general those are the places where you would find cheaper programs okay but remember there's always a catch okay there is always a catch. There is no free lunch. Uh, 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 uh. There is no free lunch in this world. So I tell people, always consider if if a school is charging you ten thousand, if you find a course that is ten thousand, <laughs> why? Why is it that cheap? Think about things like employability. How easy is it for you to get employment in that province or in that locality? Is it a remote place? Is it a good place? Is it a secure place? Okay? Because at times, I tell people, why do you want to go to a place whereby the course is costing 10,000 but you won't get a job for summertime? Not even that, you won't even get a job post-graduation that is going to help you get the Canadian work experience, okay? On the other hand, if you go to a competitive place or a populated place or a place that has a better economy, then you are, as much as the school fees is more expensive, you will still be able to thrive yourself. You'll be able to get a job and even be able to pay for that school fees, okay? <clears throat> Employability. Excuse me, some of you are bringing families here. You have to take into consideration those things. If you're taking, a, if you're bringing your family and you're coming to like a really remote place, ask yourself, what is the cost of living there? You know, what is the, the quality of life that you're going to take there for your kids, not just for you? Come on, you're bringing your family, right? Anyway, <laughs> all right, so those are the things that you want to think about, uh, course. Okay, but we said average is about 18,000 Canadian dollars. And then, of course, the other thing I said I'll talk about uh, outside of tuition is something that we call living expenses. Okay, you have to consider just how expensive a place is. But on average, it costs about 12,000 Canadian dollars a year. And the living expenses, that is accommodation and food and transportation. And then there are other fees that you have to factor in uh, books. Okay, they could be 700, could be 500 and insurance. So when you, co when you combine that, the tuition and the living expenses and the miscellaneous, you're looking at an average uh, cost of 30,000 Canadian dollars a year. Okay, an average of 30,000. It could be 60,000 a year. It could be 25,000 a year. It could be 20,000 Canadian dollars a year, depending on the things that I talked about, location, uh, province, course, blah, blah, ETC. But average, you should be budgeting for about 30,000 Canadian dollars a year. How do you show that finances? Okay. Uh, you know, you must be able to prove that you'll support yourself and the family members who accompany you to Canada where you study. Because yes, imagine you can bring your family. Have you thought about that? If you want to discuss how you can do that, please book a consultation with me and we will see your options and the best way how to approach that. I do give people really nice strategies on how to approach that. So you need to have to show that you have that money, the 30,000. So the Canadian government wants this for them to approve your study permit. They want you to show that you have one year living expenses and one year tuition. Okay. It doesn't matter. So if your cost is 60,000, then you better be showing that you have that 60,000 plus the living expenses that we talked about, an average of 12,000 Canadian dollars. Okay. It could be 10,000 in some provinces because not all provinces are the same. Some other provinces are also like 13, 14,000. So that's why I said an average of 12,000 Canadian dollars. Okay. So um, you, they want one year tuition, one year 
living expenses how do you show that you could show that in uh, a canadian bank account maybe you already opened a bank account in canada and you've transferred your money there uh, or uh, you know you could be sponsored by someone uh, you could have paid that money already up front to the school uh, that is to your proof uh, maybe you got a loan you know you could get loans uh, or maybe you got a GIC certificate um, or you know uh, a bank draft uh, that can be converted to Canadian dollar so or, or maybe you even got a scholarship so those are various ways that you can show that you have proof of finances and if you want to discuss any and how also to strategize on your finances please book a consultation session with me a study consultation now one thing before I go I want to mention okay if you're just a single student, the money that I mentioned there is for a single student. If you have accompanying family member, you need to add an extra 4,000 Canadian dollars per accompanying family member. Okay, so if you have husband, wife, and your two children, you need the first one year tuition and living expenses and 4,000 per every accompanying dependent. You must show that you can afford your study so do your math see your budget and don't be in a rush to be denied a study permit my friend i tell that to people who consult with me stop being in a rush to be denied as i said finances are critical so always work on your finances if you cover the finances you have covered half the battle towards winning a study permit if you need me to sit with you if you want me to look at your situation if you want me to help you look for courses or even determine the best course for you and the best province for you kindly book that consultation and I will see you in my next video. Bye now.